Naming simple ionic compounds isn't too difficult, but writing the formulas involves balancing charges, so it's a bit more work. We'll follow these rules here to guide us. So let's try one, the venerable sodium chloride. We can see that sodium on the periodic table, that's a metal. Chlorine is a nonmetal. That means we have an ionic compound. First, we write the symbols for each element. So on the periodic table, sodium is Na. And then we have our chloride, which is chlorine, on the periodic table, that's Cl. And then we need to find the charges. So we look on the periodic table again. We can see sodium in group 1 there. That's a plus 1 charge. Chlorine has a minus 1 charge. A plus 1 and a minus 1, they'll cancel out to give us a net charge of 0. And because of that, the correct formula for sodium chloride is just NaCl. So when the charges are the same, it's straightforward. So pause and write the formulas for both of these compounds. For potassium fluoride, we write K from the periodic table for potassium. And then fluoride, which is fluorine, we write F. We then write the charges. Potassium is plus 1, and then the fluorine here we have a negative 1. Those will both cancel out to give us a net charge of 0. So that makes this, KF, the correct formula for potassium fluoride. Calcium chloride is a little bit trickier. We can look up calcium, that's Ca, and then the chlorine, that's the Cl. But when we go to the charges, we'll notice that calcium has a plus 2, and then the chlorine has the minus 1. So the charges aren't balanced. So we need to get the net charge to be 0. What we can do is change the subscripts. So I could put a 2 here. That means I have two chlorine atoms, and each one is minus 1. 2 times minus 1, that gives me minus 2, and that'll cancel the charges out. They'll be 0. There's another quick way to check our work. It's called the crisscross method. With the crisscross method, we take this superscript here, this 2, we move it down here, and then we take the 1 and move it over here. But we don't need to write 1 because it's assumed that it's there, so we get rid of that. We can remove our charges, and we get the same thing, CaCl2, as the formula for calcium chloride. And we're almost done learning how to write the formulas for simple ionic compounds. But try these three to make sure you get it. For magnesium bromide, we write Mg. And then the bromide, that's the bromine, so Br. We can see this is plus 2, and we have a minus 1. So we'll need two Br's. 2 times the minus 1 gives us the minus 2. So that'll cancel out. We'll have a net charge of 0. And that makes MgBr2 the formula for magnesium bromide. For sodium nitride, sodium, Na. And then the nitride, that's the nitrogen, is N. Sodium has a plus 1. Nitrogen has a minus 3. So we're going to need three sodium atoms. 3 times plus 1 gives us the plus 3 to cancel out the minus 3. That makes the formula for sodium nitride Na3,3. We could also check with the crisscross method. Move in the 3 here, the 1 here. We don't write that, though. Get rid of our charges. And we get the same answer. The formula for sodium nitride is Na3N. Let's do the last one. With calcium phosphide, we look up calcium. We have Ca. And then the phosphorus, that's P. So we have a plus 2 and a minus 3. Three. This is a good one to start with the crisscross method and then check and make sure it works. So I take the 3, I move it here, and the 2 here. Remember that calcium was a plus 2 and phosphorus, that was the minus 3. 3 times plus 2, that's plus 6. 2 times minus 3, that's minus 6. So that works. The charges, they cancel out, give us a net charge of 0. We'll clean it up a bit. And the formula for calcium phosphide is Ca3P2. That's how you write the formula for chemical compounds when you're given the name. For lots more practice on naming and writing formulas, visit breslin.org. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.